What's going on guys, it's Deathmonk here. Today we're going to be talking about some rather interesting information concerning Season 3 of Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone. As you guys can see, uh, this specific um, roadmap uh, actually dropped yesterday at the time of recording this video. I'm currently in America, which is probably why um, I didn't have any time to actually cover this here on the channel already. But um, I'm just going to cover a quick little overview of uh, what to expect. So for Modern Warfare 3, we're getting six brand new multiplayer maps, including Emergency, Six Star, Grime, Tanked, Grow House, and Checkpoint. So these look pretty cool. We're also getting Capture the Flag returning, one of the chambers returning, we've got a new one called Minefield, and a returning one called Escort. For Modern Warfare Zombies, we're getting new story missions, new Dark Ether Rifts, a new Warlord, and new classified schematics. Warzone, we're getting the return of Rebirth Island. I've covered that a couple of times here on the channel. We've got Ranked Player Resurgence, Resurgence Champions Quest, New Contract Spy Drones and more. Um, there's various different other things as well in there. We're getting brand new weapons, new operators and new bundles as well. So very, very interesting here, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys' reasons and opinions are of this in the comments box down below. So, Season 3 arrives in Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone. Leave no friend behind, the Connie Group has left its indelible mark on Fortune's Keepers now occupying another landmass, the infamous Rebirth Island, come back to Warzone. Ready squad and investigate this hottest drop drops at the start of Season 3. Elsewhere in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, expect one of the biggest multiplayer map drops ever with 6 new maps and 1 variant. In also included are 4 free base weapons, 8 aftermarket parts, rank play, including on Resurgence on Rebirth Island, the arrival of Makarov and Snoop Dogg, and two brand new operators to the Premium Battle Pass, Banshee and Hush. Uh, don't forget, guys, this is all going to be dropping on April the 3rd, so hope you guys are all excited for that. As you guys are about to see, we've got a multiplayer launch trailer for Season 3, so let's check this out for the first time, guys. Now, I was wondering about you guys here, but uh, if you take a look at this specific screenshot, doesn't this look like Kratos from God of War? Let me know what you guys' views and opinions are of this in the comments box down below, so we could potentially see a God of War collaboration at uh, some point during Season 3. So, the multiplayer maps. We're going to 6 total core 6v6 maps. Sledgehammer, is great. Uh, Sledgehammer Games is dropping an incredible number of multiplayer maps across Season 3, and two of them were constructed in collaboration with Beanox. 6 new battlegrounds. So first of all, we're getting a uh, six star, um, and as you guys can see, this is the uh, map that's primarily uh, based in Dubai. So incredible feat in engineering, the Hadika six star resort sits atop a Dubai skyscraper, uh, which is um, takes inspiration from the Burj Al Arab in real life hotel that's in uh, Dubai. And caters to the most discerning of guests, you'll have little time to marvel at the breathtaking views now that this lavish retreat is under attack. The primary flow lanes through these locations offer opportunities no matter your playstyle. And while curve connecting corridors allow excellent access across around the map, there are several useless, useful shortcuts, like a vent circle connecting the aquarium and oasis lounge, a pump room that drops down into the lounge, and a precarious catwalk joining the garden helipad to a security office. Whilst getting launch as sorry, but getting emergency as a launch map, I should say. So again, this rather interesting looking map there, very, very interesting. Uh, force your force to visit the ICU, I'm guessing intensive care unit, after dominating this Arizona medical facility. Nestled on the summit of a remote mountain range, a nearby town lies in the flooded valley below. The entire area is to the scene of a major conflict conflagration, with black smoke billowing from the valley, valley below. 
While the State Disease Control Agency facility has seen evidence of fierce fighting, the floor of the map is via an exterior forecourt, the interior reception lobby, and a medical laboratory offering longer sightline opportunities from both the ground and the top parked vehicles. Otherwise, expect rapid and riotous combat. We've also got Grow House, uh, which is a remastered map from, if I'm not mistaken, I think this may have been known as Sphere in Call of Duty Vanguard. So this one is a really good map, guys. I have um, got some gameplay of that, I believe, on my channel already. So first release is Sphere during Season 3 of Vanguard. The layout of this separately compact map is similar, but the environment has changed significantly. This is less than an experimental test site and more of a backwards narcotics den nestled in remote foothills. The roof of the main barn seems to have been struck by missile fire and the rafters are still smouldering. Smaller than meat, this map features upper and lower levels of offering greater space to move than you initially expect, especially if you know the ladders and points of entry. Expect mid to longer range battles above ground and close quarter combat inside the rickety structure. Use the ancillary structures on the east and west sides as ambush points. I've also got another map here called Tanked. So this one looks pretty interesting if I do say so myself. Let me know what you guys' views and opinions are. Drop into Vondel Zoo after hours in this fast-paced medium-sized map developed by Beanox. The map is centered around a main aquarium structure within the Call of Duty Wars on Point of Interest, significantly reworked for multiplayer. Expect well-lit exterior pathways with two long flanks allowing for longer range sight lights as you navigate a tiki bar, petting zoo, concession stalls and smiling noodles restaurant as well as the secondary interior of the reptile house all surrounded in the aquarium. The action is mainly at ground level with the most ferocious combat occurring around and in the fish filled exhibition with winning players making the most of the aquarium tunnel along with an exterior and cave ambush point to the north. We've also got Checkpoint which is a mid-season map which is this one right here. Very, very interesting there. Um, so I've got a taste of Rebirth and a multiplayer later in Season 3 as the eastern point of interest known as Stronghold becomes a setting for some furious and fast-paced combat. Developed by Beanox once again, this small military comms outpost features a central checkpoint, an interior armory, storage locker room and garage. The front gate and rear roundabout are dotted with building supplies, tarp-covered crates and transport vehicles. The map is pleasantly dense, with almost all the action at ground level, the upper walkways and the control tower are sealed off, so combat is rapid, with plenty of cover options. Fall back toward this roundabout and the small hangar and shoreline building to a battle over the control of the checkpoint road and its interior spaces. Grime, which is a 6 v 6 small to medium sized map coming during the mid-season update. Very, very interesting. Along the graffiti walls, navigate the piles of rubbish and brave the derelict London Canal. Well away from Big Ben and the bright lights in England's capital city, as the tube trains rattle overhead, visit the murky brown waters of the docks. Duck into a boathouse and look for tactical cover throughout an abandoned SKN comm centre, with a choke point in the lobby where combat is usually the fiercest. Near the water's edge you'll find Emily's Greasy Spoon Cafe. The urban layout provides a variety of cover opportunities, though you could always head to the captain's dog for a pint and a punch. So that's an interesting there. Once again, four new game modes arriving in multiplayer. So a couple of them you'll probably recognise. Um, so as you guys can see, Capture the Flag uh, is returning. We saw that uh, at one point during the trailer there. An often requested objective game mode, beginning in the first Call of Duty multiplayer experience ever, Capture the Flag, or CTF, pits two competitive teams against each other with eliminations being only part of the plan. The real tactics involve stealing the opponent's flag and returning to their home base or similar to LSD defending the same base and their flag from the enemy. As a flag won't be scored as captured until a team's flag is safe in its base, squads must bring both impressive offensive and defensive capabilities to win the match. One chamber that will be coming out at some point during the launch window. This fun-filled party mode first introduced in the original Black Ops rewards those with impressive aiming and ammunition discipline. Each player in this free-for-all gets a single bullet to start and one additional bullet every time you achieve a kill. You also start with three lives, and the bullets you're firing is extremely potent, dropping force no matter where you hit them. Enemies who succumb to this one hit, sorry, one hit kill lose a life, while the successful marksman gets another bullet. Out of bullets, fancy chances at close range combat, then melee attacks are also an option, bringing a knife to gunfight if you or your foes run out of ammo. Note kills, deaths, wins, and losses do not affect your combat record in the mode. So, we've also got Minefield. Uh, in the same way that Season 2's Hardpoint was Hardpoint but with zombies, think of Minefield as multiplayer but with mines. 
Currently applicable to almost any current game mode, Sledgehammer will be switching on the game variant in a variety of modes, like will confirm domination and hardpoint. My field used the same rules as the mode in question, but with one important addition. When you defeat a viable player, a proximity mine is dropped at the enemy's corpse. This mine cannot be picked up and remains deadly to the enemy team, but not to teammates. As the action heats up, the scattered mines across the map ramp up and the action into a cacophony of chaos. Watch your step out there, operator. Escort. Those Warzone veterans may remember playing the entertaining limited time known, known as Payload. Know what to expect here as two teams, both with unlimited respawns, face off on a variety of maps with one side protecting a maw as it maneuvers across the map. Meanwhile, the opposing force has enemy takedowns and the grand prize of vehicular destruction on their minds. The attacking team's overriding goal is to ensure the vehicle reaches its destination. The defending team's plan of attack disable the vehicle by any means. Once the first game of the match is completed, the team swap objectives and the side with the quickest vehicle takedown wins. Um, Vortex playlist. I'm sure we've, we've seen this before, guys. Airborne, Satan's Quarries, Gate Grow, Spoiled, and Tetanus return in a special limited time playlist coming later in Season 3. Um, the familiar Vortex Master Bit will be available along with a new arcade mode with a number of redacted gameplay modifiers to add yet more variety to the game. So that's really exciting to look forward to there. Um, Ranked Season 3 Intel, so we get a look at the skins there. Very, very interesting. Um, we've also got a look at the Ranked Player Awards. Again, they look pretty cool, guys. Again, let me know what you guys' views and opinions are that in the comments. So, available at launch in, can be added in any season. Players can continue their previous rank grind in Season 3. Um, season awards available at the start of the season, as always. Pretty much, pretty much usual rules apply there, guys. Modern Warfare 3 ranked awards. These are the ones that we get for getting a certain amount of wins. Very, very interesting items there. Um, uh, that weapon blueprint up there is the Pro Issue Rival 9 that you just saw. You can see all the names of the uh, different items there. Skill Division awards. Uh, these ones we get for uh, getting to a specific rank. Look pretty cool again. Let me know what you guys' views and opinions are of those in the comments. Um, I'm just going to go quickly through these, as you guys can see there's different uh, emblems, animated decals, large decals, calling cards, very, very interesting. Uh, there's also different um, skins that we can earn as part of the division, seasonal division operators um, for spec group and Cortac, you have to reach certain divisions to earn those. Um, uh, if you get the if you get the number one overall, you get the an, an limited edition animated calling card and an emblem. Very very interesting. You get new perks and equipment coming apparently. So again, three new perk vests, new boots, and one new gear. A new tactical mine and enhanced vision goggles are coming during the season. So getting a gunslinger vest, modular assault rig, compression carrier, reinforced boots, high gain antenna, and new perks. So that's really interesting there, guys. Um, let you gonna get um, let you guys read through this for yourselves, guys, just to give you a bit of an idea of uh, what to expect. Um, so you get different vests that have different uh, abilities that come along with it. Very very interesting here, guys. EMD mines, again enhanced vision goggles during the mid-season update there. Very, very interesting. I think the enhanced vision goggles are the ones that you can actually see the outlines of the, the enemy players. Um, I'm just going to bypass Modern Warfare Zombies because I actually don't actually cover that much here on my channel. But um, I'll let you guys quickly read through that for those who are interested. Uh, saving Dr. Jansen as part of the mid-season update. Very interesting. During Operation Deadbolt, there's going to be a third rift as part of an additional unlock quest. New challenges and schematics coming to, again during the mid-season update for that. Deadwire detonators, golden mask, full turn sergeant's beret. Prestige challenges unlock five new prestige calling cards at each of level prestige reached. Select up to five challenges to track, including any from across the game. Um, 
They're going in the Battle 27 AR, the FJX Horrox SMG, and the Moz sniper rifle. Let's come into multiplayer as well, guys, not just uh, zombies. We're also getting a new Warlord called Rainmaker. Very interesting. It's going to be it's going to be mainly held at Raha Island across the water from Shaheen Manor. Very interesting. Quickly, Warzone overview. Um, I have covered quite a few of these in my channel already, but um, for those who don't know, uh, Rebirth Island is going to be returning at launch during Season 3 on April the 3rd. That's the uh, mini map that we uh, got for that Pacific um, map itself. The classic map, I believe, has got an additional building somewhere in there as well. Uh, Rebirth returns at the launch of Season 3. The island feels incredibly familiar. Veteran players will all find all the points of interest instantly recognisable. Uh, Connie Group has taken it over. Um, a small power plant known as Building Number 6 is the only new structure on the map. Expect more than a few surprises as you return to Rebirth Island. Very interesting there. And then it's just going to basically cover all of the... Um, Points of interest in a bit more detail. So we've got bioweapons, of course, that's going to be returning. Uh, industry, very interesting there. I don't specifically remember that point of interest personally, but uh, that's really interesting to think about. Um, talks about the interior, the exterior, uh, the water tower, which I'll come on to in a moment, I believe can actually collapse. Hilltop and helipad. Again, those will be returning as well. Chemical engineering. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the original had uh, green or black smoke blowing from it. Looks like that's still going to be the case here with this one. Uh, in the smokestacks there, that's very interesting. I think the majority of these uh, buildings will be numbered, just to give you a bit of an idea of... Uh, how to go about uh, call outs and things like that. Docks. Again, that will be returning. That's where one of the uh, famous golden vaults is, right there on the. Um, in that uh, octagonal shaped building in the middle of that top left uh, screenshot there. Very, very interesting. It's got the sewage treatment, power room, and lookouts. Um, more shots of dock there. Got the control center. We've also got the main prison building itself. That's where you can actually. There was actually an Easter egg called the Wall, game which I've already covered here on the channel, which primarily focused in the middle of the prison itself, where we had to get those uh, remote controls off the back of the toilets and things like that. Very very interesting. I'll let you guys read all the text for yourselves, guys. A bit much for me to go through at this present moment, but uh, very, very interesting things to talk about. Now, I'm assuming, I think it's, this is this water tower that can actually collapse that we saw during that uh, trailer that we saw a few moments ago. I'm pretty sure there might be a, I think there might be a screenshot of that somewhere here. Harbour. Very interesting uh, to think about there. Comms office and power station at Turbine. Towards chemical engineer is a brick warehouse there. Headquarters and the lighthouse. Um, let's have a look here. Pretty sure most people will probably recognise the lighthouse itself. That was where we saw the um, leaked image of I believe this was one of the um, specialist perks that was sitting on top on top of the lighthouse on the one of the balcony on the uh, balcony there. On the uh, surveillance tower that is on the lighthouse. Very interesting there. Headquarters. I think there was a um, another challenge where you can actually unlock the golden vault that's in there. So very very interesting with that point of interest. <laughs> Excuse me. Command Centre and the Garrison. Factory. Again, I've been there trying to 
down there quite a few times. Very interesting point of interest there, guys. Dockside and the freighters. Living Quarters, which is another golden vault and this little building just down the very bottom down here. Sorry, bigger button. It's over there. Sorry. This is my mind today. There's a little um, golden vault in that top left corner of that uh, top left image there. Apartments in building number nine. Right. Most people will probably recognize that specific area of the map. Um, we've also got Stronghold, which is the uh, little uh, POI in the uh, southwest corner of the map. Excuse the background noise, guys. Very interesting, guys. Um, we're also getting a Warzone boot camp uh, gear mode at launch. Um, very interesting. Quad only training mode, either partied up to or full squad, providing players of snapshot of the real, deal, real Call of Duty Warzone experience. So moving on, we've also got um, player weapon and battle pass XP progression coming as well. That's going to be limited to Warzone boot camp. Rebirth for Sedent again coming to launch. Um, that's going to be a maximum player count of 44. Uh, so basically that's going to be interesting there. Good luck will be closed at any time you're eliminated, you reach by a short respawn timer. Finding you have teammates who are bustle blank across the island at the time. I'm sure everyone knows how resurgence works by now. Resurgence loaded mid-season. Player count remains 44. Just trying to see what the uh, differences are. Um, you deploy using the same resurgence rules, but with the possibility of changing to another of your custom loadouts. If you're out of ammo or equipment, the higher ratio of legendary and reusable loot boxes means you're never far from a fully kitted out operator. Rebirth lockdown. Um, we've played lockdown quite a few times here on the channel. That's going to be limited to 28. Uh, so that's um, seven teams of four. So that's really interesting to think about there. It's going to be interval strikes on Rebirth Island as a new public event. So it looks like to me, uh, every time across the um, mode, we will expect to see new enemies I'm guessing coming into the match as a guess. So that's really interesting to think about there. Um, I think it looks like Lighthouse will be one of those uh, locations. The Lighthouse Tower at Headquarters toppers in the forecourt and the corner of prison below creating rumble ramps to the adjacent building in prison. So it's the, it's the Red Lighthouse that will be collapsing at uh, the uh, Headquarters point of interest. Um, and this, you know, as you guys can see, this is kind of like the aftermath of uh, prison as part of that infill strike. Wow, so the prison roof will point one point collapse, I'm guessing, during the match as, as part of the rebirth infill strike. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but uh, but we'll see. Um, new public event, Gulag, Climb and Punishment. So I'm guessing at some point during the match we'll expect to see ladders falling into place so we can climb out. So that's really interesting to think about there. That's going to be available on Bart Real in Ersikstan and Vondel. Okay, that's interesting. New public event, heavy armor during the mid-season update. In rebirth for certain spots. Now streaming infill, if this public event is activated, allows you some added protection, enabling the equipment and an additional armor plate for the duration of the match. Okay, interesting. New missions contract is spy drones. Again on rebirth island. Um, these can actually drop uh, armor plates, redeploy drones, and possibly an advanced UAV. That's pretty. That's pretty uh, handy. Uh, Resurgence Champions Quest coming to launch. So, Champions Quest. I have done it once here on the channel on um, it's back in, during, during the days of Modern Warfare Two, I believe. Um, basically, is where you have to obtain three different elements and basically use them to create a nuke. And you have to plant that nuke to basically get that Champions Quest uh, complete to get the Champions Domination prompt. You get limited rewards as a result of that. So, I'll have to wait and see how that works, but that's really interesting, exciting to look forward to. New um, equipment or field upgrades called Squad Rage. Okay, so Trio Squad Green has Battle Rage. Uh, squad Rage deploy to area effect bonds up. 
And step three, purple within range and blue is not green and purple, receives squad rage benefits. So that's really interesting to see. So if the green is the one person who got to the uh, squad rage, um, because the purple one is in the red ring, if you will, he'll be able to get it, but the person in blue will not. So that's interesting to think about there. Um, so basically you get tactical sprint, increased health and regeneration for the duration of the rage. So that's really interesting, uh, interesting to use there guys, utility box. Let's see what this is all about. Uh, running low on both armor and ammunition, only got one infantry space to carry a resupply box, so you may want to invest in a utility box. Available square air ground loot, auto purchase from a buy station. It combines the utility of the armor and munitions boxes into one. Ah, right. So utility box is basically the munitions box and the armor box combined. So that's really interesting. Uh, kill streak called Foresight in the in-season update. So uh, basically you get to see all of the uh, future storm circles. So that'd be uh, quite useful um, to uh, look forward to there. Once again, a specialist uh, perk package. This was the uh, promotional image on the right hand side of the screen that we got um, when we first heard about this uh, map returning. So that's going to be re uh, returning to Warzone. So you get Battle Hand, Double Time, EOD, Focus, Irradiated, Mechanic, Mountaineer, Scavenger, Shrapnel, Slider Fan, Spotted, Strong Arm. Perk slot 3, be cold-blooded, escapist, payout, primed, quick fix, resupply, stalker, survivor, tempered, tracker. Uh, perk slot 4, all, all perks will be active. Bird's eye, combat scout, flex, ghost, high, alert, resolute, and shrouded. Very, very interesting there, uh, guys. Let me know what you guys' views and opinions are this in the comments box down below. It's going to be a biometrics scanner. Let's see and see how this works, but it looks like it's something similar in Fortnite, if you will. But we'll have to wait and see how that uh, works. I'm guessing we have to use like a key card to basically interact with it, as I guess. Okay, these take up a card in your take up a slot in your backpack, can be dropped or looted, and can unlock a special menu in any rebirth and buy extension for the duration of the remaining match. Very, very interesting, guys. I'm just gonna call quickly over these guys because actually this is actually becoming a quite long video here guys so I hope everyone's all right with that variable time of day feature as part of the mid-season update I'll have to wait and see how that works but uh, that's really interesting to think about there smart displays coming to launch let's see what that's all about um available on rebirth and all right, operators, the listen, Connie Propaganda, the general weather forecast, rebirth, and more tactically, the weather largest heat zone is the congregation of players fighting during the match. Okay. Squad assemble and squad player bonuses. Okay, that's interesting there to think about. So as you guys can see, um, the, all the other zones are... Um, basically areas where most full squads, majority of squads will land for quads uh, mode interesting very interesting um, so that's one thing, something that you may want to bear in mind depending on where you decide to land but you will give it, uh, get additional XP for surviving uh, weapon trade station, we've seen those before in the past um, they'll be available on Rebirth Island as well so basically you get extra attachments uh, depending on what rarity of weapon that you've got. So that's yes, it's Intel. Okay. It seems the island contains a great many secrets, perhaps something completely undiscoverable. All of this is off the books and some redacted requiring a multi-step process and multitude of challenges not redacted, remaining on track redacted, but not related to the custom weapons available redacted. Okay, uh, let's see what that's all about. Bunker entrances in, the, in the, one of the in-season updates. So we get to get to use some of the uh, bunkers that we um, were, were able to use during Rebirth Island. Of course, that was the Golden Vault Easter egg, don't forget. Uh, that's uh, ooh, that's going to be on Urzikstan, apparently. So it's again, again, rank play on Rebirth Island during the launch window. So they've got a few skins there to bear in mind on. The ranked rewards. 
I'm just going to go quickly through this. There shouldn't be much more to talk about here, guys. Uh, was on ranked wards. East leave to ranked repeat. That's a really good one there. Um, we've got, again, two different uh, blueprints there. That's interesting to think about as well. Placement finishes. You get, like, different uh, wards here. We've got an SMG weapon blueprint for the swarm. Very interesting there. Skill division wards. More of those. In all of their glory, if you will. Warzone Mobile. I'm just going to go quickly over this. Uh, Warzone Mobile launch recap. Uh, very preferred mobile device right now. Connected content recap. So basically, the, anything that you earn in Warzone Mobile can be carried over to Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone and vice versa. So that's really interesting there. Uh, there's also current daily login rewards for every day that you play Warzone Mobile. You get like a, a free reward as a result. Um, there's also, I have covered this already here on the channel, so uh, there's different uh, rewards for every day that you play. Uh, the more sniper rifle that will be written. Multiplayer Core 66 map Rust will be uh, coming to one of the Warzone Mobile as well as part of the multiplayer uh, mode. Very, very interesting, guys. Let me know what you guys' views and opinions are of this in the comments box down below. Can you hear what you guys' views and opinions are? Um, I'm just going to bypass that because most of them probably already know. I'm probably going to cover that in a separate video as well. Ah, here we go. So, quickly, I'm just going to go quickly over this. The FGX Horus SMG coming to Battle Pass Sector 8. So, this very interesting little SMG. Best in class CQC damage and mobility. Very interesting there, guys. The Moors Sniper Rifle from Advanced Warfare that will be coming in about past Sector 4 at launch. Uh, level 19, the single Lord Railgun delivers a high damage payload with excellent velocity and penetration. Um, the MORS, or the Military Operated Rail Sniper, is a one-shot beast offering high damage with exceptional handling distance. Is an afterthought with this long-range and accurate sniper rifle, with what might be the perfect combination of accuracy and damage. So that's an, I was hoping the uh, silver bullet returns for that. That was a really good weapon for the that specific um, weapon sniper rifle. Gladiator, the the melee weapon coming in Balpa Sector Fifteen. Okay, and that's going to be interesting to uh, look forward to. There, we've also got the Bal Twenty Seven as part of the mid-season redacted update. Uh, Bal Twenty Seven assault rifle again from Advanced Warfare. Most people will probably recognise that. I would love to see the Obsidian Steed come for, uh, return for that specific weapon. Let me know what you guys' views and opinions are of that. Again, eight new aftermarket parts. I'm just going to go quickly over these. So, um, there's various different aftermarket parts from different attachments that give you um, improved accuracy and things like that. Jack Shadow Titan Kit for the Bruin MK9. The Jack Cutthroat for the M4. The Jack Revenge Kit for the BP-50. Um, including many others. So, Jack Patriot for the M16 from Modern Warfare 2. Bodens from the Lockwood. We've also got the uh, Jack Atlas kit for the AMR9. The Photonic Charge Power for the Mars Sniper Rifle. And I think that's pretty much it, guys. Black Cell. Pretty much, I think it's probably going to be the same as usual there. Operators Makarov, Snoop Dogg, Banshee, and Hush headline the Season 3 Battle Pass. That's going to be the Battle Pass map there, guys. For those who are interested in that. Um, I'm not going to go too much into that here, guys, but Vladimir Makarov got a shot of him. Also got a shot of Snoop Dogg. Very interesting to think about there. Um, Banshee in Sector 13. Again, interesting to think about there. And Hush or Bashir uh, so That's going to be the tier 100 skin from what we understand. So that's going to be interesting to look forward to as well. Uh, Stasis is a Black Cell Instant Ward. Very interesting there. Uh, I think that's pretty much it here, guys. So let me know what you guys' views and opinions are of this in the comments box down below. I'm keen to hear what you guys' views and opinions are. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so numbers and upload. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Of course, I've got Godzilla Kong, New Empire Bundles. Very interesting there. So. Let me know what you guys' views and opinions are. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you then. Peace out.